Hello friends, welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to talk about inheritance. Um, the next line that's failing is about inheritance. It's on line 28, so I'm just going to copy the file name and I'm going to come over to Adam and press command um, P. And if I put that in there, then it matches the file name up quickly, and so I can go over there. I'll close this old one because we're complete with that. So we're going to get started. Um, the line that's failing is line 28. And so when we look here, we can see that it's on line 28. This is the first one that we need to fill in. Um, but let's read through this code first. So we have a function, and we call the function Muppet, and it takes a two arguments, age and hobby. And so then it sets this um, dot age is equal to the age that we pass in, and the hobby is set to the hobby that we pass in. And so answer nanny is equal to a function where it says everything's cool. So this is a Muppet object with an age and a hobby data saved on to the object, and it has a function which returns a string that says everything's cool. That should be like that. Um, okay, function Swedish chef, age, hobby, mood. So Muppet.call this age hobby. Okay, so here we're saying Muppet.call this dot mood, um, and then we're setting the mood to, to the mood. And this dot cook, where we do a function and we return yum soup. Okay, so now if we do a Swedish chef dot prototype is equal to a new Muppet. So here we're passing in the Muppet, we're passing in a new Muppet, Muppet instance to this Swedish chef. And so this, this here becomes the Muppet, I believe. So about inheritance. Um, before each, we do this function. And this dot Muppet is equal to the Muppet. So we set a Muppet. We create a new Muppet at the age of two. And we say coding, which seems to be the hobby of the Muppet. So before each, before each, and this dot Swedish chef, and this should actually be on this line here. This dot Swedish chef is a new Swedish chef to cooking chilling. So this to interesting. Okay, so here's the first one that fails. I'm not exactly clear what all this means. So should be able to call a method on derived objects. So expect this dot Swedish chef. So um, this dot Swedish chef before each. So before each of these, we're creating the Muppet and the Swedish chef, and we're saying to cook. So the Swedish chef, we're instantiating the Swedish chef, this dot Swedish chef, and then dot cook. And so what's that going to return? It's just going to return mm soup. And you can see that it's actually here. So you know the answer ahead of time, but this is just sort of so that you learn this step. So what's it doing? It's instantiating a new object called the Swedish chef. And then here it's just calling how its behavior. So this dot Swedish chef dot cook. And you'll notice that they have to put the brackets or the um, braces in here for the implementation of the function. Uh, it should be able to call a method on the base object. So this dot sw Swedish chef dot answer nanny. So answer nanny is here, but um, the Swedish chef seems to have that element within it. So everything's cool, right? Answer nanny, answer nanny. So this is going to be uh, everything's cool. Cool. Um, <clears throat> it should con set constructor parameters on the base object. Constructor parameters are these guys, so mood for Swedish chef, and then we also have age and hobby for the Muffet object. So here, this dot Swedish chef dot age to equal, interesting, this Swedish chef age this. And we pass in, here's the Swedish chef, and so we're passing in the age. We're passing in two to the Swedish chef object, so the age. So Muppet.call age hobby. Um, wow, I don't even know. My guess is it's going to be two. Swedish chef dot hobby. Is it coding? Uh, because okay, so the Swedish chef, the hobby is going to be cooking. And the Swedish chef dot mood. Well, the mood is set 
on the object here and so the object is instantiated here and so you've got age hobby mood age hobby mood so the mood is going to be chilling mood. Okay, so this is all inheritance. So let's save that and refresh this page. Our last, initially we were erroring on line 28, so if I refresh the page here and scroll down, we see that now we're in erroring on line 70. So it appears that we've got all this correct. So it'd be difficult to recreate this in the terminal, but like we can go muppet dot, uh, sorry, mup, new muppet, oops. <laughs> Uh, whatever. Um, there, new Muppet. We can go new Muppet. If we go like that, then our new Muppet becomes a object with the undefined age, hobby, and answer nanny. But we could go um, dot answer nanny. And that would give you everything's cool because we've created this object and that's kind of hard-coded in to have this function to respond that everything's cool. Um, so yeah, you could do new Muppet and then start setting things later. Age is equal to two. And then our new Muppet would have that saved to its um, object, you know, to the object of Muppet, the new Muppet. And so that's how these cr uh, creator functions work. And then they're just showing you that there's inheritance in that uh, Muppet.call, this.h. The, the Swedish chef has the capacity to be, be a Muppet as well. So Muppet.call. And that's interesting. What is Muppet.call? Um, oh, so it's calling the object of the Swedish chef. And then it's passing that in. Muppet.call. undefined interesting what if we set that value what if we set muffet call is equal to that muffet call it's equal to undefined so I don't understand exactly how this works hmm. okay let's move on uh, object.prototype.beget javascript crockford prototypical html so what are we trying to do here uh, function f is equal to this return f in brackets so function gonzo age hobby trick muppet.call this.age hobby this.trick is equal to trick this.do trick is equal to a function where we return this.trick this.trick so the trick which gets passed in from the gonzo object okay so this is pretty wild no longer need to call the muppet base layer constructor gonzo.prototype is equal to muppet.prototype.beget gonzo.prototype. So before each function we do this. This.gonzo is equal to a new gonzo daredevil performer eat a tire. Hmm. It should be able to call a method on the derived object. So this so here before each what we're saying is before this before each function is going to happen before each of these it statements and so we know that we're going to be dealing with a fresh, fresh instantiation of this. So this.gonzo.do trick Okay, so what does that do? This.gonzo. Here we set this.gonzo. So that is equal to this object, which is a new gonzo object. And it's going to be the do trick thing. Gonzo is set here. And do trick is, re is equal to return this.trick. This.trick. Do trick. This.trick. And in here we've got our do trick is set there do trick this dot trick and so the third thing that was passed into the object here so eat a tire so we so yeah okay so this dot trick that's the third object that's being passed into the gonzo object and so that um, becomes eat a tire so the trick that this gonzo object has is to be able to render a string that says eat a tire so I hope that makes sense um, it should be able to call a method on the base object. So I think this is the base object. This.gonzo answer nanny. Oh, wow. F.prototype. Object F.prototype. So here, what I think what they're doing is setting the overall object to have this function. 
Huh. Should be able to call a method on the base object. This dot gonzo dot answer nanny. Answer nanny. That was from up here. So I guess this should be everything's cool. Crazy. I didn't wouldn't have thought that the Gonzo object that was created here would have access to that. And that must be because of this object.prototype. Um, I guess we could take a quick look at this. Actual JavaScript. How JavaScript works, the world's most misunderstood. Okay. So this is just a list of uh, a lot of useful things. But we won't go into that. That's outside the scope of this. Um, okay, moving on. Um, I'm going to save this and refresh and then scroll down to the bottom and see what's going on. So here we have about inheritance. It looks like line 78 is our problem. So everything's cool. This was right. Um, we should set constructor parameter on the base object. So this.gonzo.age. Well, here we have a new gonzo object. And... Um, so here we have the age is set as the parameter. So this dot age, well, it's set to the Muppet. So the Muppet is up here. And so this dot age is set there. And so we know that because it's instantiated here with three and it hasn't been changed since then, we've got three. Well, it hasn't been changed within this it statement. So this got gonzo dot hobby. Well, daredevil performer is what the hobby was, right? Because the gonzo set here and the hobby set here. The hobby is passed into the Muppet object, and so the Muppet object sets the hobby here. And the, the Muppet object is part of the Gonzo here. So, um, yeah, Daredevil Performer. Should set constructor parameters on the derived objects. This.gonzo.trick, this.trick. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is going to, because Gonzo is instantiated, um, with muppet.call this dot do trick the third thing is the trick so eat a tire i think it's going to be eat a tire again here and you want to make sure it's expelled exactly right with uh in its case sensitive so if i save that and then refresh the page over here and scroll down um, cool. It looks like we're moving on to the next one. So about inheritance. That was about inheritance. Um, this is pretty tricky stuff, uh, but it is very useful and it shows up a lot in JavaScript. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.